Looks like I'm live. Wow. It's been a long time. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Um, bear with me today as this is the first live stream I have done in probably over a year, so I might be a little bit rusty, but I've really been itching to get back into it, so I'm here. I don't have any many fancy scenes. I really only have just this one setup that we're going to be working with today. Uh, so not a whole lot of jumping around between different things. But anyway, um, my name is Brian Morrison. I'm a full stack developer and developer educator at Planet Scale. I'm a full stack developer by trade. I am a developer educator at Planet Scale. And I threw this thing out to Twitter yesterday where I wanted to know if anybody would be interested in kind of following along while I finish out this new article that I'm writing for the Planet Scale blog, uh, specifically on how to use clerk.dev. And um, clerk.dev, Netlify, and Planet Scale in order to work, create webhooks essentially from clerk.dev to Planet Scale. So this way, when a user updates a record in this application I'm building, the data inside of Planet Scale will reflect that. So this way, things on the web, the web application are accurate without having to call Clerk's website for every single request we need to make, kind of. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of what we're gonna do today. Here's kind of a list of what I got going on of what I'm at least going to work through or at least try to get through in the time that I have here. So I'm going to create a plan scale database for this this demo thing. As far as like the whole article, I guess it, make, it would make sense to give some context on the article too. Uh, for the whole article, the idea is there is this service that I'm working on, which will is open source and can be used by anybody. And we're going to make it set up in such a way so this way people can clone this into their own Netlify accounts, create a clerk dot com i guess it's clerk.com now i keep calling it clerk.dev so maybe they change that but create a basically a clerk application connect the two together um and then that'll be kind of phase one to like get this thing launched inside of somebody else's somebody else's environment not just my own um so that's step one then step two is going to be adding the webhooks which step two for that whole process i'm i'm pretty familiar with but this is going to be a little different for me because usually i would recommend like cloning it down cloning something down running it locally and testing things out that way when they are when they're working with little demos and things that I built for planet scale but this is going to be different in the sense of it's a fully functional service that's open source and I want people to be able to deploy it to Netlify without um, having to go through the heavy lifting of cloning it down modifying it uploading it to their own thing I don't know so there's a little bit of a different workflow we got going on here today so back to my kind of my to-do list I'm going to create a planet scale database and get the creds there uh, we're going to set up a test, an, an organization, or I'm going to use one of my existing orgs in GitHub in order to fork a project from my account, my organization, into that organization. Hopefully, we can set up Netlify to look at that org and project to automatically deploy for us. We'll create the clerk project or application, I guess it's called. Uh, let's see. I'm going to also have to keep track of the things that I'm going to have, the notes I'm going to have to take uh, for this article as I'm kind of building it out. Things to chain note. Uh, clerk.dev is now clerk.com. I don't know if that's referred to the same way. Uh, also, uh, let's see what else. It's a clerk, a clerk application, not project. So I'll have to go through all the my draft here and make sure that I get everything there updated. So anyway, let's go ahead and kick this thing off. I'm going to start by opening warp, which is the terminal that I've been using lately. I'll zoom in here a little bit. So this way it's a little bit bigger on stream. I'm working with a single ultra wide now, so I don't have the multiple screens that I had when I used to do streaming. So this also is going to be a little different. There might be some tweaking as I go through this process. Uh, let's start by creating a planet scale. I'm first going to use the planet scale CLI. So I'll say P scale, uh, DBLS. I want to make sure I'm in the right organization using the CLI. Uh, looks like I am. This looks like all the databases in my org that I use for testing things. So I'll do p scale db create uh, orbital. So orbital link is the name of the application, but I'm going to say orbital link demo because I'm on database that has a different name. Okay. Database was created. Now let's go ahead and generate a password. I'm going to del now. Typically, you don't want to show this to any kind of passwords, obviously, to your database to the public. But I'm going to be deleting all this when I'm done, so I'm not going to worry too hard about this. Um, so it'll be p scale password create orbital link demo uh we will say netlify demo is the name of the password no mains the branch and then netlify demo it's the name of the password all right so here's my credentials please don't hack my database i'm going to copy the username off here Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't, I have a weird thing about showing this kind of stuff on screen. So where I'm actually going to, now that I showed you how to create this, we're essentially going to populate out this, this kind of, this thing here on the right-hand side. This is a, um, 
This is a template that I'm using in order to connect to connect my Netlify application to the Planescale database. So I'm going to scroll these into another file. We're going to go secrets. Uh, let's see. And let's go ahead and copy this in here. Duplicate and we'll move that into secrets. So I actually have whatever my connection string is going to be. Okay. Now, because we're testing out our scenes, Hopefully y'all can still hear me. Looks like it's still working. I'm going to delete that password and create a new one. P scale password delete. We're link demo Netlify demo. Uh, yes, I want to delete. Yes, I want to delete. I think I typed that in wrong. Branch main. And what did I name this? Netlify demo. Hold on a second. What is going on? I'm typing something in wrong here. Pscale password. Delete orbital link demo main. And let's copy this down here. If this doesn't work, I'll just go into the UI and do it. Password Netlify demo does not exist in the brain, branch main of. Might have either I'm doing something really stupid, or I might have just discovered a bug in, <laughs> in Planet Scale CLI live on stream. That's cool, I guess. Um, okay, hold on one second. I will flip over one more time. I will flip over in just a moment. I want to finish creating this password though. So one moment here. Okay, so I have saved what I need to save. I'm gonna clear the screen here, and then let's actually head over to the Planet Scale dashboard where I'll delete that password. Um, okay, we're good, I'm back. Um, so I'm here, I'm gonna refresh my view here just to make sure that I get the latest Orbital Link demo. There we go. Let's go to settings, passwords, and I have Netlify demo, let's just delete that. Delete, 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 okay. So now that that is deleted and I have what I have saved, our path, our database is pretty much set up ready to go. Um, actually, it's not. One thing I didn't think of is I will need to walk the user through generate or setting up the database. Okay. Set, create a plan of scale database, set up the database. It's going to be a three hash because we need that be a header three to do run migrations. Well, this will be interesting. Um, I'm wondering if this, so this is something I will definitely have to do and I'm going to have to add some details to. Now, typically what I would do is I have inside of package.json, I have this DB push, which should connect into the plant scale database. Um, unfortunately, that also references a secret, so I have to flip back to, I have to hide things for just a sec. Uh, let's see. At the very least, that shouldn't have been displayed. So I'm going to copy this and come back into my local file. I'm thinking, you know what I can do? I got to see if there, I, I'll set up a custom thing where people can, custom thing. Custom thing is not the term. I'll have to set up a custom uh, GitHub Actions workflow. So this way people can deploy this directly from it. Because I'm trying to, I mean, they'll have to open it in VS Code, but I'm also kind of trying to minimize the work that they have to do in VS Code directly. I want to be them to be able to, um, I want them to be able to do most of this from the web. 
I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to open up my terminal, clear changes, and I should be in Clark <laughs> blog post, which I named it wrong the first time. Uh, let's run npm run db push. And what this should do is connect to the new database we just created. Uh, we're linking vschema. Okay. I've made a whoopsie. So we got to do this one more time. All right, let's try again and changes are applied. Now, if I go back to warp and I do P scale shell orbital link demo main. So I'm connecting, I'm opening up a shell to the database itself. Now, if I do uh, show tables, that should show me my three tables are my yeah three tables that are created sections isn't used we're only really using users and blocks here but uh, then if i do describe users describe blocks okay that looks good close that out i don't need anything there so this matches up with what we have inside of our schema here inside of uh drizzle which is the orm i'm using here so this this schema definition here is what was pushed up into the planet scale database Okay, so that is done. Um, let's go back into where are we going back into? I froze. So we've got okay, so I've got I created the planet scale database that's done. Um, I'm going to also have to uh, let's see, create a meth uh, GitHub action to apply these changes to the P scale DB. Okay, so we'll have to work on that. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that in this stream just because of time. Um, okay, so there's that. Now let's go and try and see if we can figure out all this GitHub stuff out. So this is my repository here, I'm trying to be more conscious about zooming in. And let's go ahead and create, let me see what organizations I have already. Content, premium, help repos. I could use one of these things. I'm just going to use help repos. And let's see if we can let's see if we can do this. If I go and I fork this, does it let me? Ah, yeah, it does. Okay, orbital link is available in help repo. So we're gonna copy. No, I don't want to copy the main branch. I want to copy. I don't know if I can copy clerk blog post. Okay, so this is. Contribute back by adding your own branch. I'm not going to copy the main branch. I'm going to uncheck this and we'll see if we can do the whole thing. Uh, I'll change my help repos and we'll create a fork of this. I don't do a whole lot of forking in GitHub, so I'm not... I understand conceptually what it does, but I've only, I've only contributed to other projects a little bit. Okay, forked here. Now, if I go to, it says main branch is not doing, okay, so clerk blog post exists, which is cool because that's what I wanted here. Um, so now that this exists, let's go over to Netlify and let's try and see if we can deploy this website. I'm going to import an existing site. Let's deploy with GitHub. We're going to switch over to add their organization um, help repos yeah I can have access to all the repositories uh, I need to get my auth code which I'm still flipping back to secrets for this part I'll verify that okay so here is R2 so you see we have orbital link here which is cool what's up diamond thanks for hopping in today Always appreciate your support. Okay, so this is cool. In here, um, I see we have the option to select a branch. So we're gonna deploy in here. We're gonna deploy clerk blog post. I'm gonna take a picture of this and we're gonna drop this in here. Work the project deploy to Netlify. Head over to Netlify, add new site. Oh, actually, hold on a second. Can I? I need to 
to undo that. There we go. So typically for these things, I think we have a... It's the blurred I'll do, and I'll just minimize my padding a little bit. Stream layout is very snazzy. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. I threw this together in like an hour at night because I really wanted to get back into doing this. Head over to Netlify. Okay, so that can go there. That picture is there. Um, base directory is fine. NPM run build, I think we'll build it. Uh, let's figure out what this actually will deploy to. Yeah, dist right here. Here's my distribution folder. So there's where my artifacts go. Uh, that's there. Functions is already in there and defined. Oh, cool. There is the ability to add environment variables. Okay, so we're going to take a break on this section specifically. I'm going to zoom out here. I'm going to zoom in. No, not yet. I don't need these pictures yet. And again, the whole goal of this is I'm working on creating a new um, a new article for planet scale. Um, so I'm going to add database URL, which is going to be the value. And then there's a couple more I have added here. So for clerk specifically, I have these two um, environment variables here we need to add. This Vite clerk publishable key and then the clerk API key. Let's see if I remember exactly which these are. So we're going to add these two variables, but instead of finishing this whole deploy process, I'm actually going to flip over to clerk and we're going to set that up too. So I'm going to go to my clerk dashboard and we'll click add application. And um, let's see here. Application name, let's say clerk, uh, let's see, orbital link demo. Um, let's see here. So I'm going to zoom in on this so I can take some nicer pictures. I don't want to do Google. I don't want to do email address. There is. Username was the one that I wanted to do. It still asks for the email address, at least in my setup, but I want to use this instead. So I'll click create application. And I needed to take a screenshot of this. Got it. I didn't get it. It's back up here. Orbital link orbital demo and we're going to uncheck both of these and do username the reason i'm choosing username is because um i want to set this up in such a way that someone can go to like orbital link dot uh orbital link slash u slash whatever the username is so we always need a username um but this is this is actually good right here so i'll take a screenshot of that and create the application one of my kids is about to come in here so if it gets loud then that's why <laughs> we've got one that hasn't made its way to school made his made his way to school yet made its way to school yet. That sounded terrible. Um, okay, so these are the things that I want. So if you look on the right hand side inside of my configuration, this Veek clerk publishable key is this one here. And the clerk API key is my secret key here. So in order to copy these, I'm going to need to hide the screen one more time. And then I'm just going to copy these actually directly into the um, directly into Netlify while we're chilling here. So I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. Um, all right, so let's go back to Netlify and I'm going to publish these in here. Orbital link demo. I should be able to show the beginning of this. I mean, the nice thing about Netlify is these fields are so small, provided they don't expand, that I can show everything else here, right? Bye. So I've got my publishable key there and then my API key is there. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I come, what's up, baby? Okay, go see if you can find it. Okay. Okay. Joy's a working from home. I love seeing the kids grow up, but you know, it's kind of one of those things that just comes with the territory, I suppose. Um. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. So I have my database URL, which is my planet scale connection string, uh, my public key, my public key for clerk, and then my private key for clerk. Um, fingers crossed. Once this thing gets deployed, it should just come up and work. So I'm gonna take a screenshot here. We're gonna hide my sidebar there. Take a screenshot, and I'm gonna go ahead and deploy Orbital Link. There's a little bit of configuration we're going to have to do um, once this is done. But I want to make sure this builds first. 
But essentially, we'll have, we're going to have to go into. I think we have to go to Clerk and mess with the URLs that's going to be generally generated for us during this. Post-processing. Oh, everything looks like it went through okay. Site's live. Okay, cool. So now let's go back into site overview. And do I have to refresh? It says it was deployed. Let's do a refresh. See if I get a URL. Okay, here's my URL. So I click on here and let's see what happens. I get a blank page, which is not promising. Missing publishable key. Except it's not. So I'm guessing this this has got to be coming from Clerk, but why does it say it's missing? Did I admit that I fat finger something? Let's go back into Netlify and take a look at site configuration, environment variables, beat Clerk publishable key. No. That's right, this is a public key, so I don't really care too much about this. I'm missing something, what am I missing here? Um, no, I don't wanna save that. I almost kinda wanna rebuild again. Can I clear cache and deploy site again? I wanna see what it does. Deploy settings. music's interesting I don't know why it would not have pulled in um, pulled in the clerk stuff I wish I would could see what environment variables this thing was deployed with. Hello? Oh, it did work that time. Oh, that's interesting. So I wonder if because I added those in there, it ah, that's weird. I'm gonna have to test that again. I'm gonna add a note to that. Uh, create a fork. So created the test org, forked it to the test org. So that's good. Set up in life from that org. Um, test fresh deploy again. That's going to kind of, st I mean, I might alter these, these, the orders of this then. So right now, the way that I have the article set up is I'm setting up the plant scale database or yeah, create the database, set up the database by seeding migrations from the GitHub thing is what we'll eventually end up doing. Um, setting up the clerk project. And then I was hoping, which seemed like it would have let me, but didn't seem to work the right way. I was hoping to be able to apply those environment variables in here for the initial build, but it didn't seem to take because I didn't change anything. I literally just redeployed it. Anyway, so this is kind of this, this, you know, where we're, where we're supposed to end up. So I can actually take a picture of this. Let's zoom this in a little bit and take a picture. And let's apply our stuff here, make it look all nice and pretty. And I'll drag this on to test the project. So that's what we need there. Um, I'm gonna have to come back and revisit this once I figure out what's going on there. But this is basically up to this point where we need to be. If the user who's reading this has gotten here, then they should be able to see this. Now, the next step of this is to add the webhooks. And this is gonna be relatively simple. So I'm going to, and I'll explain the, the process of adding the webhooks as we go. Do I need anything in here to sign in? Hold on, before we even move forward, paths do I have this hard-coded that might need to change Hello? I don't know maybe it doesn't uh, I need to look at something in the code I think I hard-coded something in here during testing but I need to make sure I didn't so I'm gonna go to this router because I can do um, I think it's accounts.dev they own right so accounts.dev. Let's do a control find all for accounts.dev. 
Okay, I didn't. So based on that stuff, clerk needs clerk must know what the sign in URL is. And we can actually test this inside here. If I go into orbital link, which this is, I'm gonna close out these other ones that I don't need. If I go here and click sign in, fingers crossed, this should sign redirect me to a sign in page. Okay, so sign up. Does it still ask me for an email? Yeah, it does. Okay, so now that that is there, um, now we can test this whole flow. So I don't want to, I'm gonna go back to the main page like that. And now if I, where do I need to go next? Where were we? I'll need to work on building my train, like reinforcing my train of thought when I'm working on things. I typically have these notes up for this reason because I have a tendency of just like, I'll focus on something and then I get lost with what I'm doing. Uh, so clerk seems to be set up. We're gonna move this up here. We got these three things here, so that's good. Now we need to set up the webhooks. So the way that the webhooks things work is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab this URL. Uh, so if I go, actually just copy this URL, we're gonna go into clerk. We're gonna go to API keys. We're not gonna go to API keys. We're going to go to webhooks. Let this finish loading here. So what we'll do here is we'll, we're gonna set up a special URL that's gonna map back to a, a, a specific function that's going to handle certain events that happen in the system. So I'm going to add an endpoint. We're going to paste this in. And now what it, the path we're going to use is uh, .netlify forward slash functions forward slash clerk underscore webhook. So anytime these events that I select down here and the ones I'm very specifically interested in are user created, deleted, and updated. So these three events. Uh, let's see. I can... Doesn't... Arc have a way of capturing a rolling web page or something. Picture developer off. I don't know. I'm gonna just do this. I'll do two web two pages here. Uh, pages. Okay. So anytime these events happen in the system, whether users created, deleted, or updated, it's going to send an HTTP request to our webhook to our endpoint that we have defined up here, which doesn't exist yet. We have some Netlify functions, but this specific one doesn't exist. This is what we're gonna create. I uh, don't need anything in advanced configuration. So let's go ahead and create this. Now the webhook is configured in here. So when those things happen, it's going to forward along. A signing secret, that's what I'm going to figure out how to do. Um, so now if I come into my project here, let's go back to GitHub. I actually might not. I might skip the whole process of using VS Code in the first place. If I could do all of this from GitHub, that would actually be pretty cool. So I'm going to go into functions. And we're going to, is this, whose is this? This is my help repos one. So let's add a file and name this clerk underscore, uh, hold on, goes under here. Clerk underscore webhook dot TS. This is where we get that URL from is it takes Netlify will take the name of the file and make that the serverless function endpoint to execute this. And now all of the code, I'm not going to do any kind of live coding today because I have it all here for copy and paste. Again, this is for an article. So people are going to have this as well. So this is essentially what, how we're going to handle this. There's this data type here called clerk.webhook. And the way that I've seen this specific data type is when I was building this thing initially, I think I did a console.log on event.body, which is the HTTP, the body of the HTTP request as it comes in. Um, so we're going to parse this as clerk webhook. So we have kind of a, a rigid data structure to work with. And the, the only things I'm really interested, there's more info there than, than this is showing, but the only things I'm really interested in are first name, last name, uh, image URL and username. So we're going to parse that into the webhook object that we can work with. I have a helper function that is used to create a connection to the database. Um, I can show that actually here under functions, utils, lib, uh, get DB. Yeah, here. So this just creates a connection to the database and shows that it's, it's the schema that is here. So we're using that as the type of schema. I think, is that how that works? Yeah. So this will return um, a connection to a planet scale database that has this schema. So it'll be it'll be strongly typed for us to work with, which is, is actually really cool. I'm really, I don't do as much these days in JavaScript as I used to. I do a lot of my backend stuff in Go and I'm slowly easing into Laravel now, but I have really enjoyed working with Drizzle. I think it is actually a pretty good ORM and that comes from somebody who doesn't really use ORMs for anything. Um, it's a funny story, I actually used to use ORMs I, know, I never used to use ORMs. I always use direct SQL just because that's the way that I learned how to work with databases. So I've always used ADO.NET and C Sharp. 
And then I joined a company and they're like, why aren't you using, uh, why aren't you using any framework? I'm like, I don't know because I never had the need to learn it. So I went really, really hardcore in Entity Framework, which is an ORM for C Sharp. And then I joined, I started working more with Go and their whole philosophy is they don't really use ORMs. So, oh yeah, Diamond, hold on one sec. Appreciate the call out. Um, Diamond said my camera broke. It is, this, this camera is one of those things that turns off after a while. So come on, think, think, it's thinking. I'm back. There we go. Um, okay, so anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, so I don't use I don't use ORMs, but I've actually very much liked uh, I very much liked working with uh, Drizzle so far. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is based off of this webhook.type when it comes in, we're going to perform a different set of actions. So the first one is user.updated, and this is just a string value that comes in from from Clerk. Um, and this tells us when a user is updated, right? So all we're going to do when a user is updated is we want to make sure the display, the only couple of fields that'll need to be changed. I hope the username can't be changed because that would that would definitely put a wrench in this whole process. Is um, I want to update the display name to use the user's first name and last name, which again is stored in Clerk, and I want to grab their image URL because what we're going after in order to to make this this happen. Oh, hold on, sidebar is if I go to the real, I guess the dev version of Orbital Link I have now, we're still working on a new design internally to make this look pretty, is I've got this here, right? I want the image to be able to display there. When I click on it, I don't want to have to go to Clerk every single time that I click on this to get my name and get my profile. I want that to be, I want the name to be stored in the database and I want the image path to be stored in the database as well. So I only have one place to go to grab that information. Uh, now let's go back into GitHub and we'll keep stepping through this code and what we're doing here. So the next one, oh, okay, Grammarly is trying to have a field day. Um, check for writing, no, please don't. Check for writing suggestions on github.com. Uh, so yeah, what we're doing is we're gonna update these two values, the display name and username, uh, where the user's username, meaning users is the actual schema for Drizzle ORM. So we're looking at the, the, the username column in the database matches the username that comes in from the webhook, so right here. Um, Okay, so that is basically if the user's updated. Now, if the user's created, we just gotta insert it. So we've gotta insert a record into the tables for the display name, the URL, and the username itself. So this way I have that stored and I know, um, I guess I could do, I don't know how I do the old username. That got me thinking. Anyway, we'll, we'll solve that problem when it comes. But this will um, create the record that contains that user's username. And then finally, when it's deleted, um, I don't, I will need to grab the user ID, so I actually have to do this in two steps. I am first getting the uh, getting the ID of that user from the database based on their username. I haven't yet figured out at WinClerk if I can set arbitrary values inside their API, because if I could, ideally what I'd want to do is, when a user is created, get the ID of the record from the database that's returned, and then send that back to Clerk so this way they can store it. That would that would help me avoid having to create this this initial call to get the ID for the user. And then second, I'm using uh, a, a promise that I'll block to execute two things at the same time, to delete the user from the user's table and delete the blocks from the, the user's blocks from the blocks table. Um, blocks are these things right here. That's what I'm calling blocks. They're basically URLs or links that cl click back to URLs. My camera, my camera is very glitchy right now. I can see it. <laughs> um, I, I need to get a new camera. But anyway, that uh, this actually should should do it. And then finally, we're returning a status code of 200. If anything goes wrong, I'm going to log the error, which will display in the Netlify logs, and then I will return a 500. So at least Clerk knows that something went wrong. So I'm going to commit these changes. Uh, we'll create that. Um, actually, hold on. I'm going to. I'll have to go through and and take screenshots of all this later. I'm not doing a great job of that. So um, now that that file is committed here, it's committed directly to clerk.blog. So if Netlify is set up properly, what this should do is it should automatically kick off a deployment, which I'll refresh this page and it did. So now it's building after we added clerk, uh, clerk webhook.ts. So we're gonna wait for this to build. This I could take a screenshot of because I'm here already.
Yeah, so usually when I'm going through this process of writing an article, I will um, be taking screenshots all over the place when I do here. So, okay. So now that this is done, I think going through my notes, deploy updates and test the function. Okay, so now if everything worked, what I can do is I can go back to my test orbital link. Let's refer, uh, no, this is the, the real one. Let's go to the test one and let's go ahead and create a profile. So this brings me my sign up. I'll type in my email address here and password is already pre-filled. That's because I've been using, this is the, th the username and password I've been using on the main one, which is fine. And I'm not storing the password at, uh, uh, authentication settings are invalid. Okay. Something's not right. What did I miss? I feel like I missed something on Clerk's side. Um... No, it's clerk supports notion login. It's interesting. I might have to explore that. Um, why is this not working? So it looks like there is actually, there might be something that comes back. Let's go back here. And I'm going to inspect here and look at console.log. The authentication settings are invalid. That's not helping me. Um, I'm not sure what to do here. I missed something. I feel like I missed something in here. I have no idea what this music is, but I'm going to skip this song for sure. I'm using the Streamlabs music service. I need to probably not just let stuff play <laughs> automatically. Hey, Sri, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by the stream. What we're doing here is I'm I'm working through creating a article for a Planet Scale blog, and I'm building the demo right now and making sure and stepping through things and trying to find any potential issues that might come up. Um, you know, as I go through this. Okay, so I'm. I want to do I do want to get music back on because music does I I'm a fan of having music on stream even if it's just a little something um so what I've found so far is if I try and create my account here and I click continue it says the authentication settings are invalid and I don't know why and that's what I'm trying to solve here so part of me thinks that I missed something when setting up my clerk account I don't think the webhooks portion of it would have anything to do with it has take note of the sign up URL. I don't think I'm going to need this. I'm going to comment. This is a total aside, but I'm going to get rid of this. I don't, I don't think I need this. Let's go ahead and grab the keys again. And let's see if maybe that there's something wrong there. Um, where's the clerk secret key used at though? 
because I'm not doing, I guess I am doing stuff on the back end in order to, to bring back uh, some information from, from Clerk, especially when you click me. There's there's somewhere in here that I'm, I'm using this information, I think, but I can't specifically remember where. Yeah, it's this right here. When you're accessing your own profile, it just validates your uh, your token that comes in. Let's go ahead and go to webhooks, and I want to see if there's any errors come happening here. I don't think this should cause any issues, though. Yeah, there's there's nothing's been sent along so far, so it's not here. Let's go clerk dev uh, introduction. Let's go setup. Let's just look at like the very basic figuring out how to get an application set up in Clerk. Instance, please note security reasons you. Must not use this in production. Let me look at these. Where is that stored at? I forgot. I think it's in our main or maybe it's router. I have clerk stuff stored somewhere in here. I can't remember where it is, though. Layout, not there. App, here we go, publishable key. Okay, so here's pulling this in. So there's my key. I'm gonna double check these values again. Um, Let's see here. Let's go to site configuration, go to environment variables. Beat clerk publishable key, right? That matches? Thought we solved this issue earlier. Beat clerk publishable key. <clears throat> that looks okay. I'm gonna flip over to my secret scene here. We're gonna check this out. I'm gonna re-paste this stuff in. I'm actually just gonna go to clerk's uh, thing and grab new copies of this. Okay, so that variable's been saved. Let's go back to the desktop. Deploys, let's go ahead and deploy it again. We're just gonna wait for this to deploy and see if this fixes it. I'm not sure what else I'm missing here. Multi-factor, sessions, theme, code side theming. Oh, there is a way to theme this. Oh, cool. You can specify theming options at the code level. Oh, I did not know you can customize the CSS of that stuff. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have to figure that out for sure. I don't know. I don't know what I'm missing here. This is making me double chat, double think using this whole thing as a as a demo. Sometimes I have noticed that if you go to sign up, does it do anything here? Nope, it doesn't. Just redirect URLs. Does it sign up? There's no way this works. No, it didn't. I don't care about that. It's customization. I don't really care too much about that. I don't care about any of that stuff. This thing need to be enabled or something? Continue in docs. No, that's fine. I 
can check that. Why don't you just, just create organizations? I'm kind of lost here. I don't know what I'm missing. I've got two. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's... Can I delete this? Danger, delete. Uh, yeah, get rid of this. It's interesting that I had two. I'm wondering if I'm using the wrong settings from different places. Uh, we're going to try this again I'm not sure what's I'm not sure if my studio is reflecting exactly what's going on but it looks like there is one hell of a delay between my stream and what's actually coming out I'll have to watch this more later Key. We're going to set that here, edit this, could be the same for all scopes, we'll save that variable, no, don't want to save that, and let's go back and grab, copy the private key, and go to here, let's paste that in and save that. Let's try and redeploy, I guess. This is one of the things that I've always run into with live coding. And I think one of the things that not necessarily turned me off from it, but it's like, I run into these little issues like this that pop up all the time. And it's like, how much do people really care to watch me like step through and debug this stuff? Although I, I do hear that can be a good, I don't know, thing to watch, to learn or whatever. Okay, so we redeployed. Now, I'm going to get out of this altogether. Let's go back to the main page, create profile. Continue. No, nope, still does not work. Clerk is in development mode. Sign up or sign in to continue. Hmm. 
Well, I clearly have some more work to do figuring out what's going on here. Um, let's let's try something without going through the whole signup process. I'm just going to create a user. Uh, so dot me Brian MM Dev, and then let's do um, I don't know. Do that. Ignore password policies. I don't care. In fact, you know what? In that case, like that. Create. My account was created. So, if this worked, and I go into webhooks, and I have no idea if this is going to work. This is a total hail mary. And I click in here. We can see here's our one event that came through as user created. Now, as you can see, I just created this inside of Clerk's system had nothing to do with my application or planet scale so if i do select star from uh select star from users here is my one um, my display name is null because i haven't set up a name um, however i have an image url here which should display when i go back to the demo thing here so if i go into uh let's go let's actually go here i'm gonna set the name or actually you know i like Let's go back to here and go back to the main page. Now, if I refresh this, we can see null null is not the best thing in the world, but I do have a record here. If I click on this, um, this would be where my profile is, where the blocks would be if I if this whole thing worked the way it was supposed to. Now, if I go in here into my users and I edit my my user my own user account, uh, view profile. So let's give me a name and a photo. Can I, can I edit any of this? Here. Ryan Morrison 2 is my name. And let's go ahead and save this. And I can't edit the photo, so... Oh, well, too bad, so sad there. Now, if all worked, I just need to go back into the main page and refresh this, and then there's my name. And that was all done by the magic of the webhook and everything that we stepped through so far. So in spirit, this thing's working and it's doing what I want it to. Why Clerk is not letting me create an account, I haven't quite figured out yet. And I'm gonna handle that off off camera because, because I want to. <laughs> so uh, thanks for stopping by today. If you learned anything uh, of value, uh, let me know. If you enjoyed doing me doing things like this, leave a, leave a message in the comments of this video once it goes live or once it goes public. Um, and let me know if you want me to keep doing this. Otherwise, I'll see you around. You can reach out to me on uh, Twitter, X, whatever it's called these days, uh, Brian MM Dev, or join my Discord, fullstack.chat, where we got a lot of things that are going to be improving, changing over the next couple of weeks. I will see you in the next